Um, hi, what? Everything's different? Got a new camera, I'm in a new location, what, what's going on? All these new life changes, that's, that's why it's been so long since the last video. Definitely not because I've been sad. Things are great, things are great. Things are great. The pandemic's pretty much over. The, the climate is in great shape. And women approach me all the time, all, all, the, all the time. But it doesn't matter, I'm back now, and I'm here to talk about Ben Shapiro. I don't, you frankly, just try and I don't care. The I, don't, I don't frankly give a damn what you you're, think of me since I've new... never heard of you. So if you don't know, Ben Shapiro is um, a conservative internet personality. And the thing that he's known for that a lot of right wing people like about him is um, he has debates often where he owns libs with facts and logic. And by facts and logic, I mean just, you know, blatant bigotry. You know what? Explain to me. You explain to me why black kids aren't graduating high school. Explain that one to me. Explain to me why black kids are shooting each other in rates significantly higher than whites are shooting each other. Hey, stop that. That's racist. But nowadays, I mostly just see him doing, like, reaction videos. So I do not like him. I don't like Ben Shapiro. But that really shouldn't be a surprise, considering him and me are pretty much the most opposite that two people could be. He's conservative. I'm not. He's religious. I'm very much not. And I'm tall. And he's not. <laughs> okay, listen, I'm only making fun of his height because he's otherwise a jerk. If he were a nice guy, I wouldn't go for such a low blow. No pun intended. <laughs> but yeah, if it isn't clear from the clips I've shown so far, he claims to be like just blunt with all of his facts. I'm saying that the Boy Scouts have a standard. You must be a biological boy to be a Boy Scout. You have to be a boy to be a Boy Scout. That's that written, though. In the name Boy Scouts. <laughs> but he's, he's really just a big jerk, and that's really what I wanted to talk about. For instance, in this one video, he's reacting to another video where people on the street are asked, like, if they think the 1% should be taxed more, and if they want free health care and stuff like that. And he calls out this one girl that was, like, a little bit critical of capitalism. I just think capitalism is stupid, and it doesn't work. I mean, obviously, look at our country, it doesn't work. My favorite is when people who are wearing things that they bought at a store that are much nicer than anything they could get in a communist country are like, capitalism obviously doesn't work. She said while wearing a sweatshirt that she got at a store and sunglasses she got at a store and carrying a purse that she got at a store. Ben, Ben, come on, dude, come on. So because she's ever been to a store, that means that she can never criticize a capitalist society. That's just not allowed. Oh, you hate capitalism so much? Um, well, you went to the store, so clearly that doesn't check out. Yeah, didn't you know you're only allowed to criticize capitalism um, if you, like, wear trash as clothes because you can't contribute to the society that you're critical of? Like, she can dislike capitalism, but that doesn't... She, was st she still lives in a society that uses it, so what do, you, what do you expect her to do? It's just, come on, man, you're just being a dick. See? He's just being a dick here, and that's the whole point. And then later in the video, people, like, make fun of billionaires in a really small capacity to which he says this. Why should they have more money than I am? Uh? I mean, here I am in the middle of the day in a park. <laughs> I assume this is a work day. Like, maybe they have more money than you because they're not walking around in a park in the middle of the day, maybe. Mm -hmm. uh, so, explain this to me, explain this to me. Because they are out in the, at the park on a work day, on what is typically a work day, they are not allowed to criticize billionaires because them not being at work on something that is usually considered a work day means that they aren't working hard enough. They're just too lazy to be billionaires because they're at the park. It's, it's a known fact that all billionaires in their rise to success never, ever, ever went to the park on a work day. Bill Gates, Jeff Bezos, Warren Buffett, you know, billionaires. I don't know why I'm just naming billionaires, but you know, you know, you're aware of them. They never, ever stooped to the level of laziness to do something of leisure on a work day. And that is why they're billionaires. That criticism has, like, the energy of that one girl on Twitch that was criticizing people who watched her without donating. You know what I'm talking about? If you don't have $10, you probably don't have time to watch Twitch because you should be working. You should be trying to earn money. Just the mentality that if you're not grinding 24-7, if you ever slack for one moment by going to the park, you're not allowed to criticize billionaires because they work harder than you because they don't go to the park. What? Is Ben claiming that he's never not been working in his life? He's never gone to the park on a Tuesday? Come on, man. Come on. So my wife and I decide that we're going to take our kids 
down to Santa Monica, where we take them down to a park. So that video was annoying, and I disagreed with everything he said, but it is the type of thing that I'd expect from him. He's a political commentator, and that video was commenting on politics. So it's, it, it at least makes sense why he thinks some people might care about those topics. I don't care what he has to say at all. But you know, it, that makes sense with his brand. However, Ben Shapiro is also under the delusion that I, or anybody, cares what he has to say about movies. Wh what? What? What am I even saying right now? Well, he does movie reviews all the time and like videos about movies. Avengers Infinity War. So I have many thoughts on Avengers Infinity War. Why? Why? That'd be like Guy Fieri talking about movies. Oh. That is gangster. Here's the only thing I don't like. No, stick to fucking diners and Ben Shapiro stick to bad political takes. That's just how the world works. Like he has this one video where he talks about the fact that the new Superman is gonna be black. If by new and exciting you mean that the guy who used to be iconic for saying truth, justice, and the American way will now be systemic racism, evil, and the American way. I mean, th this is what's going to happen, right? And of course the video's titled, Superman Goes Woke. But people on the right pretty much consider something too woke if there's just any sort of representation in it. Like any movie that doesn't have a cast made up of completely white, straight men is considered woke to right-wing people. And this is kind of off topic. Like obviously Ben Shapiro is critical of this, but I've seen other people be critical of it too. I personally think it's cool that the new Superman's gonna be black. You could also not care. That'd be an acceptable reaction. But to get mad about it, um, and I saw a lot of people get mad about the new Little Mermaid being black as well. She's not white. She doesn't have red hair. Are you telling me there was no other actress in Hollywood that had the red hair and the skin tone? Um, no matter what you say your reasoning is, uh, you're still mad that a person of color is getting a job. So, I don't know. I think no matter what, no matter you say, Oh, I just don't like forced representation or the woke agenda. It just, it still feels racist. I'm sorry, because you're just mad about a person of a certain race being in a certain position. That's, that's what racism is. <laughs> guys, guys, I, I figured it out. Ben Shapiro's racist. Wow. We're really making the big discoveries here on my channel today. But Ben makes lots of videos about movies and I don't care about any of them. I don't care what he thinks of Zack Snyder's Justice League. Yeah, it's actually really good. Zack Snyder's Justice League is actually really good. I really don't care what he thinks of the Spider-Man trailer. Alrighty folks, so we are going to be examining the new trailer for Spider-Man No Way Home. As you can tell, I'm ecstatic to be back in the Marvel Universe. It's what I love best. That one's actually the video that made me want to make this video. Like, it's just so obnoxious. He just sits there and makes fun of the trailer like an asshole. That's not good dialogue. You spell. could just go to her house and tell her. Oh, from Inception. Multiverse is a concept about which we know. Oh, so we're just gonna do Inception now. Like, okay, obviously I'm a little offended because I did like the Spider-Man trailer. The Spider-Man, the Spider-Man trailer's out. The Spider-Man trailer's out, um, fuck. Hello, Peter. Oh my God! But if you were to ask me like top five things I don't care about, Ben Shapiro's opinion on the new Spider-Man trailer would probably be like, you know, number one or number zero if that was possible. And then there's this other video where he talks about five movies in Hollywood that secretly have conservative values. We're gonna be talking about why so many of your favorite movies are secretly conservative. And, ooh, it's pretty rough, not gonna lie. <laughs> like first he talks about the movie A Quiet Place and how because the couple in the movie decided to have a baby during an apocalypse where it'd be hard to raise a baby, um, The Quiet Place is secretly pro-life. They get pregnant, they decide to have the kid, despite the fact that it puts everybody at risk. This is about the idea that even when you have a pretty good reason not to have a kid, you should still have a kid and take life-altering risk in order to have that kid. So unintentionally, the movie's incredibly pro-life. Now, hold on. I, some, I have something to say about that. So I don't know if you've seen A Quiet Place. You should, it's a good movie. And not because it's secretly conservative. <laughs> but as I mentioned, it's a sort of post-apocalyptic scenario. You know, society isn't like in a normal spot. And that leads me to ask the question, um, where would this couple in the movie acquire 
question during the apocalypse. Yeah, I, I, I don't think Planned Parenthood stays open during alien invasions. So I, I think that might be why they decided to have the kid. Not because um, they're Republican, <laughs> you fucking idiot. Then he does an ad for Raycon in the middle of this video and he uses the earbuds to watch his company's shitty movie run, hide, fight. Whether you're taking up that new hobby or you just wanna make your day to day a little more comfortable or you wanna watch great movies with excellent earbuds Raycons, those are the perfect way to bring premium audio to everything you do. Which if you don't know, it's like a movie that his company made about how you should like fight back if there's ever a school shooting, which um, no, that's advice I disagree with. Don't do that. Fucking yikes there, bro. Don't, no, don't do that. And really definitely don't make a fucking movie about it. Holy shit. And then after he talks about some other movies, he goes on this big tangent about how storytelling, interesting storytelling is inherently conservative because it deals with clear distinctions between good and evil, which is an inherently conservative value. When you look at the structure of story, story is inherently bent toward conservatism. Why? Because it has to contrast virtue with non-virtue. In order to have heroes, you have to have villains. In order to have heroes and villains, you have to have values. So I guess he's claiming that like liberal people um, view human beings as more complex than simply good and evil. Oh, oh, I'm so offended that I guess that's something I do. Oh my gosh. <laughs> but he says exploring moral gray areas like that in film is boring and people are tired of it. So the idea of a moral relativism in which there is no right and there is no wrong and we have to understand every side of the story and every side of the story inherently is kind of, like that is boring nobody's all that interested in it and it doesn't work on film that i actually agree with that i actually agree with like all the movies that try to do that are super boring and nobody liked them like breaking bad i don't like what even is that did anybody watch that joker nobody saw that i know um thanos didn't really take off as a villain because he was kind of sympathetic uh darth vader you know who's redeemed at the end of the story darth who like what <laughs> but yeah so ben's basically saying i think he pretty much straight up says that um any movie where a character overcomes obstacles is inherently conservative every movie that you see that has a hero overcoming obstacles that is about a person who is acting with some form of durability and integrity in the world. Hey, these are all conservative values. I guess he's saying like, like liberal people don't like to overcome obstacles or don't wanna overcome obstacles and they just want everything handed to them on a silver platter. People on the left just think that uh, if you get into a car accident, that shouldn't bankrupt you. That's kind of just, that's what we think. That doesn't mean we don't overcome obstacles. But yeah, Ben Shapiro seems to have a lot of opinions on movies and fictional storytelling, which is uh, interesting because he actually wrote a fictional book and it's fucking terrible. No surprise there, but you know, hypocrite. I'm not gonna talk about his book because one, I don't wanna read it and also there are lots of great videos. Um, Curtis Connor talked about it on his podcast. And I know what you're thinking. You're, you wanna ask Jacob, are there N-words in the book? Yes. The answer is multiple. <laughs> as well as the YouTube creator, Jose, went really in depth on it. This is a tough book to read, particularly in public. You have to hold it in just such a way that no one can tell you're reading a book by Ben Shapiro. I really recommend checking those out because his book is so hilariously bad and it's pretty much exactly what you expect, bigotry and all. It's fucking hilarious. So yeah, um, I don't really have like a thesis to wrap this video up, but I did wanna say how the political divide right now is bad and I don't think it's helping things. I don't think us as people, specifically Americans, are better off hating half the country. But at the same time, when it seems like the right-leaning side of the political spectrum want to be represented by this guy, like this guy is a guy who they like and are how is sort of like a big face in their party yeah so i'm gonna start partially scripting my videos again i think that might be a good idea that's fucking makes me think that they're all jerk idiots like him because he really is and he's blatantly racist and you know all the other phobics that there are i actually just said that all the other phobics that there are did you know I'm a writing major at university? <laughs> but yeah, it, uh, it, 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 it doesn't make it easy for me to reach across the political aisle and try to mend things because this, as well as the whole anti-vax thing going on that I don't want to talk about, it doesn't make me like these people. It doesn't make me want to interact with these people. So yeah, that's kind of just my thought on the state of the country right now.
But hey, that new Spider-Man trailer is pretty fucking sick, isn't it? <laughs>